Hello everyone, and welcome to 5 Quick Fixes for a Better Pedal Board. In my years working in stores and on tours, I've seen, heard, and provided solutions to many a problematic parade of pedals. So let's start with some do's and don'ts. Here's one I made earlier, a demoralizing display of exactly what not to do. Ah, uh, that's better. Can you spot the difference? Let's take a look. Silly spaghetti cabling. The longer your cabling, the further the signal has to travel, resulting in more capacitance, aka tone suck. Leading to a duller tone with a loss of sparkle and clarity. Poor quality cables will do the same thing, even if they're nice and short. You should use high quality shielded cables and keep them only as long as necessary. This reduces noise from interference and the aforementioned tone suck. And whatever you do, stay away from these <coughs> custom shop branded cables. Stick to proper stuff with nitric M pins. They're hard wearing and they ensure a good connection. Up next, poorly powered pedals. Splash the cash on a purpose-built power supply with isolated outputs. This helps to eliminate electrical interference and the resulting noise, as well as lackluster performance from pedals that aren't getting good clean power or sufficient current, both problems that commonly occur when chaining. Chaining isn't the biggest no-no in the world. Fine to do if you must, but always run from a decent power supply and keep to pedals that draw a low milliampage, like this example shown here. Time-based effects and things with LFOs can cause gremlins to pop up in my experience, and power-hungry pedals like delays are a definite no-go. Moving on, we're more into a more of a uh, art as a science territory, because the order of your pedals can make a huge difference. I'd recommend keeping your true bypass pedals up the front, closest to the guitar. Bear in mind, fuzz pedals and drive pedals are built and designed. They're done so with the guitar plugged straight in. They're not sat behind a buffer, inactive pedals, or any other variant that affects the signal path. However, there are no strictly right or wrong answers. A lot of pedals vary wildly from one to the next, one thing to the other, and there are some exceptions. Sometimes you're just gonna have to experiment and see what works best for you. So I've got a couple of examples here to demonstrate the point I'm trying to make. Let's have a listen.
So there we are. Time for a quick recap. Always use a quality cable. Nitric jacks and shorter patches are more reliable than reduced capacitance, aka tone suck. Purpose built power supply. Reduces operational noise, but keep high draw pedals off of the chain if you can. Buffers impede pedal performance. Tuners do not have to go to the front of the chain, but a fuzz almost always should go first. Try placing your phaser first to get a thicker and fuller tone. Put your harmonizer or your pitch shifter after your gain stages for a cleaner effect with more definition and a more musical result. So there you go, five quick fixes for a better pedal board. Let me know in the comments how wrong you think I am about everything I've just said. If you found this helpful at all or if you like the cut of my jib, consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other projects. There's some links down in the description. Until next time, keep on rocking in the free world.